The third stage used an Allegheny Ballistics Laboratory solid propellant motor, which was designed for use as an advanced high-performance third stage for Vanguard. An explosive bolt separated the third stage from the payload and fourth stage. The Able One vernier and spin motors were also developed for the Vanguard program. The fourth stage rocket was a solid fuel Thiokol Corporation motor. The trajectory for Able One required a high degree of precision in launching time. A period of about 20 minutes of each of four successive days constituted the permissible launch time. Because of the required timing accuracy, several scheduled holds were incorporated into the countdown. The countdown included second stage propellant loading, electrical systems checks, and the ordnance task, first stage engine checks and fueling, power removal, regulator setting, and liquid oxygen fueling, then terminal count, and finally launch. At 73 and 6 tenths seconds, a turbo pump failed, and the liquid oxygen pump stopped. The experiment was an apparent failure, but science learns from failure as well as success. On October 10th, at 3.42 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the second experiment in this series, an Air Force Tor Able One space probe, under the management of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, achieved a near-perfect takeoff, just 13 seconds later than scheduled time. Good performance was obtained from both the first and second stages. However, the second stage velocity was 190 feet per second less than expected, and at shutdown, the second stage was lofted three degrees too high. The third stage velocity was 500 feet per second less than desired. The Millstone radar station at Massachusetts Institute of Technology acquired and tracked the second stage. The Manchester station at the Jodrell Bank Radio Telescope Installation, Manchester University, tracked the payload, Pioneer 1, for several hours on each day of the two days' flight. The first day, the Hawaii station tracked from the time Pioneer 1 was acquired until it sank below the horizon. On the second day, Hawaii tracked the payload as it approached the Earth then lost it as it plunged toward the sea in the southeastern Pacific. Because of the deficiencies in the speed of the second and third stages, all Vernier rockets were fired in an attempt to make up this velocity deficit. The added impulse was not sufficient and escape velocity was not achieved. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration estimated that the fourth stage and payload reached an altitude of 70,717 statute miles. An attempt was scheduled on December 6th to place a United States space probe beyond the moon. Jupiter was selected as boost vehicle for this Juno 2 rocket, which was to launch Pioneer 3. At the Army Ballistic Missile Agency, Huntsville, Alabama, the first stage was modified for this mission, and test run. On the west coast, in Pasadena, California, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the second, third, and fourth stages were assembled. 
The payload cone undergoing vibration testing was 23 inches long and 10 inches at maximum diameter. Several days before scheduled launch time, the first stage was brought to the launching pad. The morning before launch, the payload was hoisted, positioned in the vehicle, and given final checkout. A few hours before launch, the fueling operation began. On December 6th, Juno 2 stood ready on the launching pad. It weighed 121,000 pounds at liftoff. After the burnout of the first stage, the booster motor separated from the guidance compartment and nose section. Almost simultaneously, the nose section was detached by an explosive charge and moved out of the way by a small rocket motor. Meanwhile, jets of the guidance system were activated to place the high speed stages and the payload in proper firing attitude of direction. A brief period of coasting followed. Now with the rocket in effect aimed at its target, the spin stabilized high speed stages commenced their firing sequence. With the firing of the last stage rocket, the probe has now achieved escape velocity. After a long period of coasting, about 10 hours, the burned out fourth stage is separated from the probe payload and a de-spinning device consisting of weights attached to wires is activated to stop the spinning motion of the probe. The probe payload will now coast on into space. Pioneer 3 rose to an altitude of 63,580 statute miles. During 1958, a large segment of the nation's scientists, engineers, and production experts were drawn together and given direction. Against this background, the country carried out a series of space experiments that yielded valuable data to the world's store of scientific knowledge. There were a number of failures during the year, and the United States promptly announced them. The first and most spectacular of these was Vanguard at the end of 1957. There were other Vanguard failures, all achieved takeoff, but trouble occurred either in the second or third stages. Explorers two and five, Beacon, and Pioneer 2 were also considered unsuccessful experiments. A beginning has been made of which we may well be proud. We are, however, only just over the threshold. Much research, reevaluation, and work lies ahead for us. The United States is aware of the magnitude of the challenge and aware that it must be fully met.